it just literally happened to me last week again. I was Explain. coming back from Miami from the Fresh and Fit podcast. You I was fuck either of those guys? Huh? You fuck those guys? Ew, like what? No. I, <laughs> Why ew? Because I, I honestly, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that. Forget it. What? But no, uh, if you, you cut, gave would you cut it out? Ew, no. like what? What? Like, no, I'm not. It, okay. Like, yeah, I feel like unless it's financial, men don't, it's hard for me to get turned on by a man. Like to me, it's like, yeah, no, I'm good. You really? know what I mean? Yeah, like unless I think like even watching a man spend his money like recently I was at the strip club and watching a man spend his money even on other women turns me on. You know what I mean? It's just like it makes me feel like, wow, like you're a boss. I think you need therapy. <laughs> Fuck you. I mean, I'm just serious. Like you have to Why do I need therapy for getting what I want just for living? OK, if you're a woman who could get turned on by a guy for other reasons and then you also get turned on by a guy spending money on you, I guess I could understand. But when you say you only get turned on by a guy's throwing money at you, I mean. The, I mean, that, the, that, that's like the first thing. And then, you know, then I'm curious now. Who, like, oh, okay, you're hot. Big dick energy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. What kind of financial circumstances did you grow up under? Like, were you poor growing up? Hell yeah. Oh, I, was okay. in, I had, my mother was 18. My father was 21. My dad had a couple crack houses, so he had money and cars and stuff. But it was like hood shit. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I have no bread. Uh-huh. I had to get it out the mud. I guess that does probably partially explain it. Maybe. I mean, just like your male role model having crack houses. I guess that's probably yeah. got to explain some of this. But my dad did financially take care of me my whole life, my whole life until I was 21, until I finished college. Right. But mm -hmm. he was also basically committing genocide destroying his own community to make no money that was to... just why he was young after like he was <laughs> and not no hate on people selling crack or anything because i understand a lot it would be unfair for me to hold your dad to that standard when a lot of the people i interview have obviously uh probably killed tons of people with the drugs that they were selling mm -hmm. and i guess that's just you know an acceptable part of the culture but uh yeah i don't know it's just there's got to be more to this i don't know um what were we saying prior the thing that really kind of the the best part in the Kevin Samuels thing that I saw was how you tried to like basically explain how it was illegal for them to kick you out of the apartment and he he I think kind of cornered you and made you realize that actually they legally no it it is illegal though especially during Corona because right. they were trying to I mean these circumstances were weren't the ones I was under because the person was is paying my bills happily uh -huh. but he tried to say if this was a circumstance and I obviously I'm not just going to give in. I'm not going to be like, OK, here you go. Like, no, like you're going to have to wait until I, I get my shit together. OK, but say it was me and we were dating and I was paying for an apartment that you were living in and paying for the car and we broke up. I would say I'm taking it all back. And then what are you going to do? Like. I'm going to say, get it back in blood, bitch. Yeah. And I mean, I probably <laughs> like if I got to send some some people to, you know, kick yeah, you out of I the guess. apartment or whatever, I guess I got to do that. But I hope they don't have to hurt you or whatever. But I'm probably and I would like to not be there since uh, me being part of it doesn't seem like a good idea. But like, what are you going to do? Honestly, dumb things have never happened to me. But I, know, I would but just, just imagine that I would not um, I wouldn't leave easily. And I don't have a shame in saying that. Like, I'm not. Yeah, no. It's just not happening. You're not going to kick me out of space that you placed me in. Like, you're going to have to wait until I'm comfortable enough or until I'm ready to do what but I need to do. It's just so interesting you say you're not going to when legally it's their right to. And they it's the right thing, in my opinion, for them to be able to. And there's nothing that you could do to stop them. And if the cops were called or if it was taken to court, they would rule that you were wrong. Like, what jurors, what, what, what basis does this, this I cockiness have? I don't have? really know the laws, you know, so I can't really fight that. Um, right. But I know that I'm going to stick it out until I can't. Yeah, you're going to have to drag me out of there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I, I'm, I'm already said this, but what does this guy think of all this newfound attention to his uh, romantic situation or his financial situation, I guess? Like, what does he think of the fact that this has gotten so much attention and that it's basically about him, even though he remains anonymous? He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He probably thinks it's cool. He hasn't really said anything in regards to it that's negative. Mm. Um, he's definitely said, you know, he's a money person. So he's definitely said capitalize. He's definitely said try to make it into something for yourself. You know what I mean? But he hasn't said anything. He doesn't feel any way. He doesn't care. That's crazy. Because I would think it would be like really embarrassing to like even though he hasn't been named. 
I but just, there, you, you'll be surprised that I've received cash apps from, from men after this. Like, men are in my DM sending me money who I don't even know. Right. Who probably will never meet me, who don't know where I live, don't know anything about me but this, what they see on the internet, and they're sending me money. I mean, I guess it shouldn't be so hard for me to understand because the truth is is that there's tons of girls out there who are, like, charging money for their OnlyFans, and then their OnlyFans has, like, what, like, pictures of them in a bikini whatever like not that anything that crazy and then meanwhile you could log right on to Pornhub and search that girl's name and see her getting fucked in the ass whatever and dude's still like I mean if you're paying for the OnlyFans you kind of are just paying her for no reason realistically because you know there's I, crazier shit on Pornhub not for every girl obviously like mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you're not on there but no I mean I guess it shouldn't surprise me so much that guys just want to give money to girls for nothing but I can't, yeah, I can't escape it. It's just baffling to me. It's, I don't think it's for nothing. I think it's for just them existing. And I feel like, I mean, I feel like, don't a lot of, pod, what's Patreon? Don't people, like <laughs> men or whoever watch you give money to people just to listen to you? Patreon.com slash mm -hmm. no jumper. Yes, but I mean, there's a lot of uh, content on the Patreon that's like exclusive that they don't have access to. Right, we can do you, naked girl stuff on there. Mm -hmm. We can do, you know, all kinds of drug types. And, and <laughs> Not so, that we and have so yet, but we're going so, to. And so they find value. Even, you know what I mean? But a person like me would be like, why would I pay for this? You know what I mean? Like you said, when I can go on Pornhub or right, I can it, listen to this on YouTube for free or whatever. So that's the part that I don't get. Because even on Fresh and Fit podcast, I didn't want to like put them on blast. But I was like, aren't you guys, you men paying to watch men? Like, I don't get it. Like, why wouldn't you pay a woman like if you liked her? or if you were had interest in her like what's the difference well i mean the difference is that like if somebody you know and apparently there are many people who are open to this but if if there's people who watch my podcast and they want to see more of the podcast or they want to see some extra content or you know some people do it out of the goodness of their heart because the reality is is exactly. that you could be a huge fan of no jumper and it costs zero dollars like for you to be a fan you can watch everything on youtube for mm -hmm. free some people see that they realize at a certain point like oh they have all these expenses they have all these employees maybe i want to give them five bucks a month because that will help make their whole exactly. operation easier same here so some people see a beautiful woman and they're like maybe i want to buy her a car because that's going to help her get from point a to point b maybe i want to put her in a house because that's going to she's going to be sheltered and it's going to be because of me right that this is happening the same exact thing but i think there's a big difference between like a podcast that you get a ton of enjoyment out of and that occupies like many many hours out of your week versus like just a random woman just having a car or just living in a house. Like it just seems like much, much less common sense to want to support. Really? I think it depends on who you are and what you like to support. So some people may like to support a podcast and some people like to support women. Some random woman having a nice car. Yeah. And that makes men feel good. Listen, the other day. Oh, yeah. With the taxi situation. I was about to say that story came off the flight to Miami. My phone was dead. So I had no choice but to talk to this person. I was annoyed at first. He's talking to me, telling me about the cars that he has. And I'm like, can you buy me a car? And at first he's laughing like, ha ha, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, I'm really serious. I really need a car. Like mm. my car is messed up, da, 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 you know, bullshitting, whatever. And um yeah so I exchanged so then we were talking you know we, we continued to talk but he wasn't like he wasn't really jacking it like during the our initial like car ride mm -hmm. gave him my phone number he's literally been calling me the last five six days trying to get me to meet him at the dealership but I've been so busy running around with everything that I haven't had the chance to every single day are you going to meet me today at the dealership are you going to meet me today at the dealership are you going to meet me today at the dealership uh that he wants to get me a car don't know this person literally had a one hour taxi ride that I didn't have to pay for. If you're driving a taxi, you're not making enough money to buy a random woman a car. I mean, I don't know. Some people, you don't know. I mean, you kind of do that. Like, driving a cab is not the best job. I've watched YouTube videos about people who drive <laughs> Uber and shit. They make, like, you know, 500 bucks a week, whatever. I mean, it's well, cool. Well, according, according to him, he has an X, whatever the fuck, BMW. He has a Porsche. He, you know what I mean? He put his daughter through school cash. You know what I mean? So he, whatever money he has saved up, maybe. I don't know what's his financial situation, but I know he wants to get me a car. And when I go home, I know I'm going to go get my car. Does it stand out to you that there's maybe like a possibility that he might like eventually stalk you or like do some creepy shit or rape you or something like that? Because that, that to me, that's like the first thing that comes to mind. Anytime somebody tries to offer me something for free is just alarm. You think they want to rape you? 
<laughs> yes. No. <laughs> alarm bells go off in my head. Like, okay, I have guys come up to me and they say, "Oh, I own this place, and we'll let you, we'll let you have fucking whatever rental car you want. Just like shout us out on Instagram or whatever." I don't do it because I don't want to be in a situation where someone's giving me something because then they're gonna feel like they can ask me for something or they can like exert pressure on me. And I know that being in the position that I'm in, I don't want to have to do anything for anybody. So I just say no. If I'm going to do it, people offer to work for me for free all the time. I don't want to fucking have somebody working for me for free. I want to pay you a fair amount, and then I can actually lean on you to do the work that I need you to do. If, I'm, if you're working me for free, I can't yell at you and say, hey, you need to do this. Why the fuck didn't you get this done, yada, yada. I need to be able to rely on people, and that just doesn't really make sense to me. Well, for me, I, uh, I just feel like if you stand strong in your stance, I don't give a fuck what anybody feels or thinks or wants to do. You know what I mean? I mean, no right. one forced you to do these things for me. So it's like once you give it to me, it's mine. I do agree that these men, if they want to spend money on these relationships or whatever, then that's that's cool. That's like their prerogative, et cetera. I do think we need to address like the simp culture where so many guys think that this is like a good use of their time or money. I think it just says like really horrible things about men in general that so many men are this stupid.